My wedding is coming up and my mom has been campaigning hard for her, my husband, my stepdad to be the person to walk me down the aisle. I already asked my paternal grandparents. My mom knew I would ask them and knew when I had, but she hasn't given up on her desire for me to ask her husband. The other day she told me it would make the most sense and she felt like he was the correct and most worthy person to walk me down the aisle. I called her out on that and said she should be more honest about why she wants him. I know she knows her husband and my dad hated each other and she believes I should have been loyal to her husband over my dad. She especially thinks I should have given all my loyalty to my dad to her husband after I lost my dad at the age of seven. Background, my parents broke up, never married, and my mom got married to her husband when I was two. My dad and her husband hated each other. I was always aware of the fact. But it became especially bitter for me when I was six and my dad was diagnosed with cancer. I don't remember a lot from that time, but I do remember my mom's husband showing up to see my dad when he was in the hospital, and I remember him yelling at my dad. I know before that the two were as bad as each other and the animosity was mutual. When my dad died, I didn't automatically start to care more or feel closer to her husband. He did try, and I think part of his hatred for my dad was that I was such a daddy's girl and never looked at him being in my life as having two. I spent equal time with both my parents when dad was alive. I never got closer to my mom's husband. He was my mom's husband and my half-sibling dad, but even though I don't remember when I didn't know him, I never saw him as my dad. He always hated my dad, too. I heard him grumble about him over the years, even saw him spit near a photo of my dad once. Eventually, he gave up trying and decided I wasn't worth his time, which I felt was better for everyone. But my mom hates it. She hates that he's just her husband and I haven't embraced him as my dad. She once said it can be hurtful to lose to a dead man and be rejected in favor of a dead man. I asked what she meant by that and she told me I never picked her husband over my dad and never let him feel like he won against him in one thing. I told her he had. He was still alive while my dad was gone. My mom still wants that win for her husband, especially when his hatred for my dad still burns strong. I believe my paternal grandparents are the right people to walk me. I've been close to them my entire life. My mom is mad that I called her out and tried to make her be honest. She said she wasn't lying and I was being rude. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. He yelled at your dad while lying in the hospital with a terminal disease. He spit near your dad's picture. I'm surprised stepdad didn't pull out the dad's IV too. What a creep. Why would your mom expect you not to hold this man's actions against him? Her irrational expectations should tell you exactly how much weight her opinion should have for you. Your mom is operating under the mistaken assumption that since the hatred wasn't directed at you, it can't have really hurt you. If you haven't, it's time to correct her perception. Please go with your gut and have your paternal grandparents walk you down the aisle. Frankly, your stepdad is lucky he's invited after the disrespect he showed to your father. What was even the reason for the hatred on his part? According to my maternal grandma, it goes back to the very beginning of my mom's relationship with her husband. My paternal grandparents had said my mom asked my dad if her then boyfriend could adopt me and he was only in her life a few weeks when my dad said no, he held it against my dad. They said mom's husband appeared to forever hate that my dad was in my life and raising me. Also, dad thought of me when he was dying and set up a trust for me with all the money he could save for me so I could have some stability in the future. He left my grandparents protecting it and he left a letter for me to know his thoughts on what the money was for. There's some interesting background, and I'd like to know if that feeds into the narrative for your stepdad. There's nothing like financials to make people dislike you, and your father protected your inheritance from anyone else touching it by putting it in that trust for you. I hate to read into things, but could it be possible your stepfather wanted the money? I know kids may not realize, but if they were in a poor financial position and there was money that he couldn't touch... It sounds to me like your father was very smart and didn't trust your mom and stepdad with the money. I, 32 female, have an autistic child, Alex, young grammar school age. Due to a family emergency, we had to fly to a different country, and the flight was quite long, six plus hours. Due to Alex's condition, I usually try to pack some food for them to eat as Alex is a very picky eater and has a full-on meltdown if hungry. Unfortunately, one of the foods Alex likes is peanuts, the other is a very rare flavor of crisps and chocolate of a specific brand. On top of that, I usually have other foods like puree for Alex in my bag. 
As I've mentioned, we only had to fly due to a family emergency, and nobody in my family agreed to watch Alex in my absence, so I had to take them with me. On our way back, the airline lost our luggage, so I couldn't get proper food for Alex between the flights. I bought a large bag of peanuts so they had something to eat. We had a special meal ordered for Alex too, but for some reason, the crew gave it to someone else on the plane so there was nothing for Alex to eat, except peanuts. They had nothing to replace it with. At the start of the flight, an announcement was made for nobody to eat peanuts due to someone with an allergy present. After the takeoff, I asked a flight attendant where the person with allergies was located so we could sit in the different ends of the plane. The flight attendant refused to answer and after Alex's food hadn't arrived, I had no choice but to let Alex have the peanuts to prevent a meltdown for the next few hours. The flight attendant wasn't happy and tried to stop me, but I reminded her that they left my child without her meal and gave it to someone else. After the landing, a couple sitting a few rows behind me called me an idiot for putting their lives in danger, even when I tried to explain what had happened. When I was venting to my sister later, she agreed with them. Am I the idiot for letting my child eat peanuts when someone was allergic to them on board? You are the idiot. The airline sucks too, but we can all agree that a meltdown is much better than an anaphylactic reaction at 30,000 feet. Literal potential death beats the meltdown of your child, OP. I also have an autistic child who loved their peanut butter sandwiches. When both my two were younger, I never allowed them to take any nut product out of the house due to others who may have allergies that we come in contact with. You thought that your child's comfort, and you not having to deal with a meltdown, was more important than possibly killing a fellow passenger and the plane may be making an emergency landing. Well done. Learn to do better next time. My 40 female daughter, 22 Rita, is pregnant. She's almost 20 weeks along and just told me a few days ago. Rita moved back in with me and my husband, her stepdad, when the place she was renting with her boyfriend, 22, and a former roommate fell through. Rita and her boyfriend are still together and decided to keep the baby. The boyfriend lives about an hour and a half away. Anyway, Rita does absolutely nothing. She doesn't work or go to school. She'll watch TV until 5 or 6 a.m. and then sleep until 1 or 2 p.m. most days. Only cleans her room when I tell her to. She doesn't wash dishes or laundry or take out the trash. When I try to talk to her, she starts crying and screaming that I hate her and I'm trying to stress her out and she can't deal with it. My other young adult kid is in college full-time and works part-time. They were raised with the same rules and expectations. I tried telling Rita she was having a baby soon and needed to grow up. Cue more crying and screaming. She literally throws herself on the floor and sobs. She needs to get her act together to take care of the baby and be a decent parent. That baby is hers, not mine, and her and her boyfriend's responsibility to raise and provide for. She needs to go to school or work and apply for daycare vouchers and any assistance. She needs to pull her head out of the sand and do something with her life. I had kids young, but I also went to school part-time for several years to achieve my goals. These conversations always end with Rita on the floor, crying, screaming and basically throwing a tantrum. The only time she does anything is when I either force her to or her boyfriend picks her up. Otherwise, she'll go four or five days without showering or changing clothes. I told her that has to stop. I love her, but I'm not raising her baby or caring for her like a child. She knows what's right and expected of her. Rita says I'm the idiot because I'm turning my back on her and my grandchild, and if they suffer, it's my fault because I have the ability to give them a good life and home with plenty of stability, but I'd rather make her struggle. I'd never let the baby go without. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. She's either going to have to step up or give the baby up for adoption. After making sure she's physically healthy, you should get her into therapy. She's clearly having a tough time figuring out how she's going to make it in this world with the responsibility of a child. Being a supportive parent to her and a grandparent to the child does not mean giving them everything. But you can support your daughter to become more independent. A support group and therapy are a good starting point here. I've suggested therapy to Rita many times. She balks and rolls her eyes at any suggestion she's less than perfect. Her boyfriend is not a bad guy but foolish with money. He's currently living with his dad because he decided to get a fancy car and a new phone, which eats up about half of what he makes monthly, so he can't even afford to help support them. Then it is tough love time. She is a full-blown adult and lived independently with the boyfriend before getting pregnant. You allowed her to move back in and she abuses the privilege. She doesn't have a job tying her down locally, so it's time to move in with her boyfriend, the baby's father. Also, it's time for the boyfriend to sell his car and step up. 
OP, you can't rescue her and we're at the point where being codependent will cause you long-term heartache. My brother got a girl pregnant basically right out of high school. My parents disowned him because he wanted to stay in the kid's life instead of just paying monthly child support and going no contact. This led to him dropping out of college and working full-time to help support his girlfriend and future kid. So, recently, my parents have decided to retire and move to the Bahamas. They left their companies to me, which are worth a good chunk of change since I was already working for them. Recently, my nephew and his mom found out about this and inquired if they left my nephew anything. I told them my parents didn't want anything to do with her or her kid and didn't leave her anything. My brother passed away five years ago. I thought that was all there was to it, but she asked me if I would give her kid, my brother's, half of the inheritance. For some more context, my parents didn't want my brother to have anything since they believed he couldn't make good decisions as the head of a company. I told her this and assumed that was it since she left. Unfortunately, a few days later, she's been pestering me about doing the right thing and giving the kid his share of his grandparents' wealth and has been a massive nuisance. Edit for clarity, it's not legally inheritance. I just called it that because that's basically what they did. I transferred the assets I get when they died to me a bit early. You are the idiot. Your parents are the idiots here for not acknowledging their grandchild and trying to make their son reject his child. Now you're following in their footsteps. I don't think I'd give a half, but I think any decent person would want their nephew to grow up without being in poverty and want a relationship with their dead sibling's child. Maybe you could pay a monthly amount for child support or set up a trust fund for college. I'm not sure how old the kid is. Normally, I'd say it's not your problem, it's their money, etc, etc. But you're part of a toxic family, and you have a chance to help someone who's been unfairly excluded. And did you have any affection or respect for your brother? This is one of those cases where you are technically in the clear, but you are the idiot, if only by passive association with your parents' cruelty. I disagree, not the idiot. Your parents' decision is a separate story. Before his death, your brother was responsible for creating a will and estate for his child. That being said, the money your parents gave you is yours to do with. Do you have a relationship with a girlfriend or did she turn up out of the blue with her hand out? Would your brother want you to help provide something for his child? If so, determine what amount or percent you feel is appropriate. You aren't obligated to half. My wife's sister and her husband have discussed possibly becoming foster parents. They've three kids of their own already, and sister-in-law's husband is far more eager than my sister-in-law is. Sister-in-law is perfectly aware of the fact my parents fostered when my sister and I were young, that our relationship with our parents is terrible today, and she wanted her and her husband to sit with me and discuss things from the point of view of the kid who was already there. She worries about her own kids and how they could still give them a good life while helping other kids. Sister-in-law's husband told me before the talk that I could sugarcoat some stuff and not go into too many details. Most of my sister-in-law's questions were around how our parents juggled two kids of their own with any number of foster kids present. She wanted to know about the emotional impact, everything. Background, I was seven and my sister was five when our parents sat us down and said they would be helping other kids and giving them a home. They said some would be temporary, but some might be permanent. It took 18 months for them to get their first foster child. We had to be interviewed and a bunch of stuff happened before. Quickly, my parents went from the two of us and adding another child to having six kids in the home. My parents struggled to juggle everything and the ball was dropped on us. My sister suffered a lot more than me for it. At 19, she was diagnosed with dyslexia and dyscalcula and that was after years of the school noticing but our parents not doing anything. She got caught in the middle of the teachers giving her notes to give our parents and growing frustrated when our parents wouldn't respond or agree to meetings. While our parents would say they would go, would forget, mom would ask to be reminded but then become annoyed at being pestered about it. My sister gave up after more than a year of feeling like she was in trouble everywhere. She also never finished high school because her grades were so bad. I have asthma and sometimes my needs weren't met very well. My sister tried to help by caring for some of the dust for me. But it was hard sometimes when some of the foster kids had a lot of dust on the things they would bring to our house and I was exposed to them. Our parents would also say the house was clean or a little dust wouldn't be too bad. But my asthma is more dust sensitive. The relationship with my parents was almost entirely broken down by the time we hit our teens. It never recovered. My sister-in-law and her husband heard many of those details and more in some of my answers. 
I explained some can make it work, but the damage can't always be reversed if you can't, and your bio kids are the ones the ball is dropped on. My sister-in-law's husband accused me of trying to turn them off fostering and said I was preying on sister-in-law's fears. He said I had no reason to give out so much information. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Absolutely not. He's asking you to lie and be pretty selfish, to be honest. The most important and vulnerable people in this scenario are the kids. Your honesty is definitely in their best interest. I bet after sister-in-law has divorce papers prepped and ready to go. Oh yes, OP, please tell us all about your experience, but only tell us the good part. Because I want my wife to only hear the good part so she can make important life decisions that I want her to make with insufficient information. So she can be blindsided and upset that nobody ever told her what might happen. And then we can blame you when it potentially goes horribly wrong.